What's up guys, I'm Puneet from Programmies and welcome back to the series on Python. So far in this video series, we have mostly used simple data types like int, float and bool. Python also offers a range of compound data types that allow us to work with multiple items at once. In this video, we will learn about two compound data types, lists and tuples. Lists in particular is one of the most commonly used and most versatile data types in Python as you will see in this video. So let's get started. Let's learn how to create a list. We'll start with the list data type. In Python, a list is a sequence of items in an order. We create lists by placing items inside square brackets separated by commas. Now it's not necessary for a list to have all of the items of the same type like this. We can also create a list having mixed data types and it may also contain duplicate elements. Let me show you. So here I'll say mixed list and then I can say random list equals something like 2.5. Let me add in a string called hello and say a uh, negative integer like minus 5 and I can also repeat a number like 2.5. This list that I've stored in the random list variable has four items, a float, a string, an integer, and again the same float. We can also create lists that do not have any items like this. So here I can say empty list and I can say list1 equals just the square brackets without any items in between and let me print it out to see what I get. Now when I press run, then I can see that numbers list is printed having four elements and the list1 is an empty list that's printed here. Since there are no items inside list1, it's an empty list. The size of an empty list is zero. To check it, we can use the built-in len function. Let me remove the mixed list first. And then I'll wrap the numbers list and the empty list, list1, to see what I get. Now when I press run, then I get 4 and 0, which are the lengths of the numbers list and list1 respectively. Now let's learn how to access list elements. A list is a sequence and its items are always in order. Suppose we have a list of programming languages like this. So I'll say languages equals Python, JavaScript, C++, and Kotlin. Now let me print the languages here. I'll say print languages and when I press run, then you can see that Python, JavaScript, C++ and Kotlin are printed. So the first item in this languages list is Python. The second language is JavaScript. The third one is C++ and the last one and the fourth one is Kotlin. We can access individual items of list by using something called index and it starts from zero. So the index of the first item is zero of the second item is 1, of the third item is 2, and so on. Now suppose we want to get this first item python. To get this item after the name of the list, I will type square brackets. And inside those square brackets, I'll put 0 because I want to access the first element. Now when I run it, then I get python. Similarly, to get C++, we need to use index 2 because it's the third element of the list. So I'll replace 0 by 2 because I want the third element and when I press run, then this time I get C++. This languages list we have been working with has four items. Can you guess what will happen if we try to access the fifth item using 4 as an index? Why don't we try it in our code and see it for ourselves? So I'll index, I'll change index 2 to 4 and now when I press run, then Python tells me list index out of range. This error message means that we are using an index that does not exist because the fifth item doesn't exist. Now let's talk about negative indexing. In Python, we can also use negative indexing for sequences like lists. 
using a negative index gives us items from the last. So minus 1 gives us the last item, minus 2 gives us the second last item and so on. I have this languages list we have been working with on the screen. Let me change index to minus 1 and run it. So here I'll say minus 1 and when I press run then I get Kotlin which is the last item in the list. Similarly we can get JavaScript using minus 3 because it is the third element from the last. Now when I press run then I get JavaScript this time. As you can see negative indexing is pretty useful when we need to access items from the last because we do not even need to know the size of the list. Before moving to the next section of the video, I'd like to mention that the programmist team has created an app that allows you to learn Python from your phone. The app contains bit-sized lessons that are easy to understand, a built-in interpreter so that you can run Python on your phone, quizzes and many more features. The app is available on both iOS and Android, the links are in the video description below. Now let's learn about slicing of a list. We learned to access an individual item from a list in the last two sections. It's also possible to access a whole section of items from the list, not just a single item. Let me give you an example. I have the same code that we have been working with on my screen. I'll remove the minus 3 index to access the third last item. Now let me access the first three items from the list. So I'll use 0, colon, 3. Let me run this code. This time I get the first three items of the list on the screen. If you've been following along, that means the items having index 0, 1 and 2 were printed. The thing you need to remember with slicing is that the first index is inclusive and the last index is exclusive. So 0, colon 3, that means 0, colon 3 will give me 0, 1 and 2 index which are the first three elements of the list. Now let's try to get the second, third and fourth items. Since the starting index is inclusive, we need to use index 1 to get the second item. And the end index is exclusive, so we need to use 4 as the end index. Using 4 will give us items up to the index 3, which is technically the fourth item. I'll press run, and as expected, the second, third and fourth elements are printed to the screen. Let me tell you an interesting fact. If we use the empty start index, the slicing starts from the beginning of the list. So here I'll try something like colon 3 and when I press run, then I get the first three elements. This means that just leaving the first element open or empty is equivalent to putting 0 in front. So when I press run, I get the same result as before. Similarly, if we use the empty end index, the slicing ends at the last index. So here. I'll remove this and I'll say I want to start from 1 and I don't know and, and I want to go to the end. So when I press run then the slicing starts from the 1 index and yes, it goes up to the end of the list that means Kotlin should be included in the slice. By the way we can also use negative indexes during slicing. If you're interested you can check out our website programmist.com to find more information about it. Now let's learn how to change items of a list. Lists in Python are pretty dynamic. It's super easy to add, modify and delete items of a list. The term we use for these kinds of changeable objects is mutable. So we can say that lists are mutable objects. Let's see how we can change items of a list. I'll start with the same programming languages list we have been working with. Now let me change the second element from JavaScript to Ruby. It's pretty easy in Python to do that. We just need to assign Ruby to the second element like this. So here I'll say languages 1 equals Ruby. And after this if I print languages and press run, then now I can see that the second element which was JavaScript has now been changed to Ruby. If you don't know, then Ruby is a popular programming language. We can also change a portion of the list in a single statement. I'll modify the code I had written where I changed JavaScript to Ruby. But this time I will change the second and third item of the list in one go. Here I'll say languages 1 colon 3 equals list of Ruby 
and dart. Now when I press run, here I have accessed the second and third items which are JavaScript and C++ using the slicing operator colon and then modified them by putting the new values Ruby and Dart in their place. That is why the elements that were in present in index 1 and 2 are now Ruby and Dart. Now let's learn about iterating through a list. Before we learn to iterate through a list, let's learn about the in keyword. The in keyword is used to check whether an item is in the list or not. I have this languages list from before. Now let me check if python is in the list or not. Here I can say print python in languages. The python in languages statement prints true because python is in the languages list. Let me run this code. Now the python in languages statement prints true because python is indeed in the languages list. Let me change python to rust and run the code. So here I'll say rust in languages and when I press run, this time I get false because rust is not in the languages list. This can be helpful when we want to check whether an item is present in a list or not. We can use this as a test condition in an if statement for decision making. We can perform one set of tasks if an item is in the list and another set of tasks if the item is not in the list. If you want to get individual items of a list one by one, the easiest way to get them is by using a for loop. We have already discussed them in the previous videos, but let me revise it again here. I'll remove the print statement and I'll add a loop. So I'll say for language in languages and then I'll say print language. This for loop iterates through elements of the list one by one until the end of the list is reached. I'll press run and as you can see all four programming languages are printed here one by one. This language variable is python in the first iteration, javascript in the second iteration and so on. And that is what we have printed inside the body of the loop. If you want to learn more about the for loop in detail, check out our python for loop video. The link will be in the description below. Now let's learn about list methods. The reason lists are so versatile is because it's so easy to add, change and remove elements from it. Suppose we have the same languages list we have been working on in this video. Now let's say we want to add an item to the list. We can use the append method to do this. This method is already available when we work with list. Let's say we want to add rust to our list. We can just say languages.append rust. So I'll remove this old code and I'll say languages dot append rust and now if I print languages and press run then you can see rust is also inclu included in the languages list. Let's say instead of adding rust in the end we want to insert it in the second position. We can use the insert method for that. So I'll replace this append and I'll say insert and because I want to insert it in the second position that means the index 1 and when I press run then now I can see that the Rust programming language has been appended in the second position which is the index 1. Now let's learn how to remove items from a list by removing C++ from our list using the remove method. So I can just say languages dot remove C++ and now when I press run then I can see that C++ has been removed from the list. Sometimes you might have to create a copy of a list. To copy a list, we can use the list copy method. So here I'll remove this old code and I'll say languages1 equals languages.copy. And instead of languages, if I print languages1, then I can see that I get the same programming languages list that I had before. The languages.copy returns a new list and it is assigned to the languages1 variable. There are many more list methods readily available for use that make working with lists very easy. You can find all the list methods and how they work with examples in our website programmers.com. I will also include the link to the list methods page of our website in the video description. Now that we have covered lists, let's talk about tuples or tuples as some people like to call them. A tuple in python is similar to a list. It's also an ordered collection of items. The only difference between the two is that lists are mutable that is we can change elements of a list whereas tuples or tuples are immutables we cannot change a tuples elements. 
To create a tuple, we need to wrap items inside parentheses and these items should be separated by commas. So let me create a new tuple, I'll say numbers equals parentheses 21 minus 5, 6 and 9 and then I'll print the tuples as print numbers. Let me quickly run this and you can see that the tuple is printed. We can access elements from a tuple in a similar way we access elements from a list. Accessing elements from a tuple is possible as long as we do not try to change the value. So here I'll say new numbers 2 and when I press run then I get the element in the second index or the third element. We can also perform slicing similar to lists. So here I can say 1 colon 4 and when I press run then I get elements from index 1 to index 3 which is the fourth element. Like in a list, the first index is inclusive and the last index is exclusive. We can also loop through a tuple using a loop. So here I'll remove this old code and I'll say for number in numbers and I can say print number. Now when I press run, then I get all the numbers. All the things that we have learned till now about tuples is similar to that of lists. Now let's see how tuples are different from lists. As we have mentioned, the difference between tuple and list is that a list can be changed but tuple cannot be changed. Let's see that in action. I have this tuple that contains the same programming languages from before. Let's try to change its first element from Python to Java. So here I'll say languages 0 equals Java. Let me also print the languages. Here I'm trying to assign Java to the first element. Let me run this code. We get an error, type error, tuple object does not support item assignment. This error message is telling us that we are trying to change an item of a tuple by assigning it a new value but it's not allowed with tuples. We also cannot add and remove items from a tuple because unlike lists, tuple doesn't have methods like append, insert and remove. So if we are sure that our sequence won't change till the end of the program, it's better to use tuples instead of lists. If you're interested, you can find more information about tuples and tuple methods on our website programis.com. I'll include links to some relevant articles in the video description. Before we end this video, here's a little task for you. Can you guess the output of this program that you see on your screen? I'll give you a couple of seconds to pause the video. As always, you'll find the answer to this question in our GitHub repository. I'll also include this link in the description below. We have covered a lot in this video. Let's have a quick recap of what we learned. A list is a collection of ordered items. To access individual items of a list, we use indices. Python indexing starts at zero. There is also a concept of negative indexing in Python. This is used to access elements from the last. We can access a portion of a list by using the slicing operator colon. We can use loops to iterate through items of a list. Python has several useful methods that make it easier to add, change, insert and remove list elements. Finally, we learned about tuples. A tuple is similar to a list except tuples are immutable. We cannot change elements of a tuple. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something. If you're just watching the video without writing any code, I highly encourage you to try the programs in this video on your own. The only way you can be a good programmer is by trying. By the way, you can find all the programs from this video on GitHub. I have posted the link in the description below. Feel free to copy the programs and edit them as you please. And if you have any questions and feedback, use the comment section below. In the next video, we will learn about another collection data type, strings in detail. Join me in this video series and let's explore the exciting world of programming together. If you like this video, hit the like button now and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring that bell icon so that you don't miss the next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Happy programming!